Hey guys and welcome back to another one. Now about a year ago or so we took a look at the GPD Android version and then a few months later the GPD Windows and right now I've got here the GPD Pocket Edition that we will uh, take a look in just a few moments. If you ask me, hey Robert, what about your favorite one? Which one do you prefer? I still prefer the Android version right over here and really really soon I will take a look at the improved version that they released this year but that will take a few days so right now let's take a quick look at the GPD Pocket Edition which as far as I'm aware is the smallest laptop in the world. And we are back. So starting as always with a very quick unboxing experience, what I can say is that it comes in a really elegant package. Uh, once we open, we will find the GPD Pocket Edition, some documentation, the screen protector, which is obviously optional, and then the charging cable along with some headphones and a power adapter. Now looking at the build quality and design of this pocket edition right over here. Guys, for those of you that already know the past models, there is a huge difference between them which is uh, both past models were made of plastic and this is entirely made of a brushed aluminium alloy which looks and feels really premium, especially compared with the other two models. When we touch it, we feel something that it's more like a laptop and less like these uh, gaming devices or targeted at gaming. Now, in terms of specifications, it's running the Intel quad-core CPU Atom X7 Z8750 at 1.6 GHz, which we have used quite a lot here on the channel on other machines. It also has 8 GB of DDR3 RAM and 128 gigs of flash storage with a 7-inch IPS panel uh, with a resolution or a maximum resolution of 1920 by 1200 with touchscreen, uh, which is really, really useful. Now, the keyboard is is packed in a small form factor as you guys may have the chance to see on screen and although the keys are quite nice we will need some time uh, to get used to it because the keys are located differently from other keyboards that we use. Now the mouse it's interesting and it looks like uh, it came out from the late 90s. I did actually use a few laptops back in the day that had uh, this kind of mouse right over here. Nonetheless I do believe that the keyboard and the laptop itself doesn't have enough room to have even if it was a small touchpad. Nonetheless, what I do believe is that most people using this machine will use the touchscreen uh, instead of the mouse itself, just because it's more convenient and easier to use. And in terms of performance, what I can share with you guys is that those of you that follow the channel have seen a few machines with this uh, CPU, so we will be able to use as a office machine for Microsoft Office uh, apps and also if you want to use for Photoshop, some light usage and things like that, even some older games or mobile games, we will be more than uh, fine. I did play around with two of them. One was Dirt 3 and the other one was Asphalt Extreme, which are two different games. One desktop game, but old uh, kind of game. And then the other one, a new game, but on the uh, mobile platform. Now, in terms of connectivity, we will find all of it on the right side, as you guys will have the chance to see. A USB 3.0, one headphone jack, micro HDMI, and a USB Type-C for charging, which can be also used for data, video, and audio. And testing out the connectivity, as we always do here on the channel, I did start with the micro HDMI uh, to my 4K display. And as you guys can see, I did get 4K at 30 hertz, so we can use this machine on the go and then when we arrive home just connect to a big display and we will be fine to work. I also used my uh, USB Type-C direct cable to my display. I do have an LG that has a USB Type-C direct connection to the display so I used that cable right over here and the results that I got were 4K at 30 Hz, but one extra right over here is that uh, the display itself will charge this computer while we are using it, so we don't need uh, to plug anything else. And then lastly, I did plug in a Minix hub, in this particular case, a USB Type-C hub that you guys will see on screen. And in terms of ports, it will give me 
a lot of extra ports and this of course will depend on the hub that we use but in this particular case I do have an Ethernet connection SD card slot and in terms of image what I could get uh, was only up to 1920 by 1080 at 60 frames per second unlike the other two uh, connections that were giving me 4k at 30 Hertz and in terms of charging the computer as long as we have uh, the power adapter connects to the hub it will charge the computer so this is a great example on how we can use this machine on the go and then when we arrive home just connect a cable of the uh, USB Type-C hub and we connect all the peripherals uh, to this computer and including a 4K display or a TV or anything that we want to use. And this brings us to the conclusion. So guys, my opinion here is really clear. This is not for everyone. Now these two models right over here, the Android version is the cheapest one, so almost everyone can get one of these. The Windows uh, older version, uh, it's a little bit more expensive than the Android and this one a lot more expensive than these two. So I do believe that there's a market for it, but it's not for everyone. I do see a few advantages here and I can see a few scenarios, uh, something like if I want a great portability to take anywhere uh, and then when I arrive home I can connect it to a big display and have a workstation that I can just pick it up, put it in, I wouldn't say a pocket, my pockets are not this size, but put it inside a bag and just take it with me this is an elegant solution. I also see it as a laptop to take to a classroom and guys you know that I'm a teacher so this is something that always comes to my mind. Taking this to a classroom which is really portable, do what I have to do on the classroom using a projector or something like that and then once again when I arrive home I just need to connect it to uh, any bigger display and I can work fine with it. One other scenario that I could see is that for those of you that enjoy playing uh, and consuming multimedia we can get a really nice portable Plex server with this machine and when I mean Plex there are other software that we can use but Plex is one of my favorites so I do see this as a Plex server player portable machine that I can take anywhere with me and I can do a lot. Now the keyboard as I said is one downside because it is quite a big keyboard which uses the uh, old computer right over here but the keys although they are very useful uh, we will need some time to get used to it. So guys this is my opinion it is great really premium great build quality I do believe that some people that have uh, this machine or will purchase this machine if they use it if they take the full advantage of it it will be a great machine but for the most part I do believe that users either will want a tablet or a full-fledged laptop which will give them a lot more freedom instead of this one but of course this will always always depend on our personal lead. And that is it. Hopefully this video was helpful in some way and if it was don't forget that usual thumbs up. My name is Huerto George and as always I'll see you guys on the next one.